Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. In this episode today, it's going to be an almost no news episode. We're going to be doing a New Year's resolution episode for all the CDL teams. Kyle and I both drafted up a little paper with all of the teams on it, and we're going to be kind of giving a New Year's resolution for every team that's in the CDL and discussing those. So I think it's going to be a really fun episode. Uh, but before we get into that, Kyle, how are you doing today? Doing well. Um... Yeah, I'm sitting here eating Christmas cookies and <laughs> uh, you know drinking tea and coffee and just you know just stuffing myself with uh, all the good stuff uh, over here, uh, eggnog as well. Um, oh, so yeah, it's been good. Uh, I'm ready to get into this, uh, make some New Year's resolutions, uh, not for myself but for these CDL <laughs> teams. Yeah, so. I mean, it sounds like you're eating good over there right now. Oh yeah. I saw your post with all your your food that you made for Christmas. It looked fantastic. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so much work. I'm still like, you know, I made it on the 25th and it's currently <laughs> the 27th and I'm still like tired from all the work I did. <laughs> I believe um, it. But yeah, so that was good. Uh I'm trying to time out my cookie bites over here to not like come in here with like the stuffed mouth voice. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm I'm uh but yeah, I'm still uh you know, just getting over the the post holiday withdrawals and stuff. So, all right. Yeah. Well, we're gonna then offer some New Year's resolutions. Maybe they'll give you some inspiration for what to do for your own. But we got a lot of COD teams that need some help, so I think that'll be a fun thing to do with this episode. Uh, but if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and go check out the audio platforms as well. Anywhere you can listen to audio podcasts, you can find us. So go check us out on there. Call of Duty season is fast approaching. Uh, doesn't seem like it is, but in just about a month, we'll be seeing our show matches. And a little bit after that, another week, we'll be seeing the actual first official matches. So we're almost there. We're almost ready to actually talk about matches and watch some gameplay. But before we get into that, we're going to offer some teams some advice on where to go coming into this season. First thing, though, we got one piece of news we wanted to talk about. I'm sure you all saw it. It was a hex rant on the optic podcast he kind of went at the dev support team and uh the dev team at activision and really all the activision studios for their lack of support for competitive and really i mean always in cod but especially since the cdl launched and he really went at them uh kind of want to know your thoughts on this before i really get into anything yeah this was uh you know i think we've touched on you know his points you know, multiple times sure. throughout our uh, discussions here. Uh, so really nothing new, but to to have Hex kind of come out and just, like, openly address it, uh, you know, without, like, the subtlety, like, the subtle, like, back, like, the jabs or the hints, kind of, like, hinting at things. He just openly said that, like, we're not getting the support that we were promised. We're not, uh, you know... He he made a point to say like league play was promised or like it was things that he was told in the initial like investors meetings or something, and they haven't done like a proper league play. Uh, mm. There's so much time in between the re release of the game and when the competitive scene kicks off, and uh, and then just like he he was talking about like how the like we were talking about, like last week with the Krampus running around in the <laughs> private matches, uh, just kind of airing a bunch of frustrations. Uh, I give him major credit for that, but at the same time, it's like, you know, we've seen a bunch of, like, pros go at the developers or, like, kind of, like, be critical of the developers. And, um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to accomplish anything other than probably getting, like, a backhanded call from the league and probably a substantial fine for being like an owner yeah instead uh, of fixing anything they'll just try to silence them yeah so i'm not i don't know i i enjoyed it i had a couple laughs uh d yeah. along the way but uh yeah I, I it was enjoyable but i'm i'm still skeptical just like you know after after like like he said after three years uh it's kind of hard not to be frustrated and just kind of like the mm -hmm. learned helplessness of like you're not getting anything and you repeatedly ask for it so yeah that's i mean you pretty much summed up my thoughts and like you said i don't really want to like go into specifics and dig into a lot of what he said because we've talked about a lot of the points he made but it was kind of refreshing to hear like a lot of times like you said he kind of does like the little like kind of like almost like sneak jabs at the league and at the devs and stuff and like 
he'll say without saying it, kind of hint at like, eh, they did this, they didn't support us in this, but this time he just kind of just yelled about it. He's like, we've been promised league play three times and uh, we never get it off launch. And every single time they just save it so they can get another bump in their game when they have a tournament the first tournament happened a couple months into the game and league play comes out a couple months into the game and it gets a bump and it's like yeah at this point it seems like that's really all they're using league play in the cdl for is just to get an uptick in players in the game when that comes out which is sad uh but his rant is definitely well received i feel like from the competitive community they hear it well we just can only hope that it hits the devs well and they actually do something about it but I doubt that'll happen, but it was nice to and refreshing to hear him rant because so many of the players are kind of so silenced because if they say something like this, their pockets are harmed. And I think uh, I think Hex will probably get fined for this. I guess I don't really know how it works for owners, but I'm assuming it's somewhat similar contract to the players. But it's just that's my thoughts on it. It's just refreshing to hear him express all the complaints we have. But obviously, he has a much stronger voice in the CDL than uh, any of us that could really express it as like a fan from the outside looking in. But Nice to hear him uh, hear him talk about it, and hopefully, at least in the short term, we maybe see like an uptick in them being more responsive or something because of this rant and like the the public backlash they're going to get from it. But who knows if it'll change anything? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like like you said, it's uh, you know just a bunch of empty words uh, until there's actually things done by the league or by the developers mm -hmm. because he like he said the the league support and the league ops has been great it's just oh, yeah. that people are actually hand, working in the cdl they're great yeah their hands are tied by the developers obviously because we're in a new game cycle every single like every like 10 or 11 months we're into a new cycle and so mm -hmm. you know the the league ops hands are really tied by the developers and they're jumping from developer to developer to developer year over year um you know, next year we'll be back on an IW game, Infinity Ward. Um, and then presumably we'll be back on Treyarch in two years. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, the, it, it must be really frustrating for, uh, you know, the the people, the, the silent majority at the League Ops that are like, you know, they obviously they can't be outwardly critical or else they would probably be out of a job. But, uh, you know, people that want to see competitive succeed. And, um, you know, I believe that there's a way to make competitive succeed without, you know, sacrificing their, their war zone baby. Um, yeah. cause that seems to be what they're really focused on, mm -hmm. uh, at, at a, uh, at a meta Activision level. So I don't know. Uh, I, I feel like we've been, you know, just whacking the dead horse with sticks for a long, long time. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was just something I feel like we had to mention cause it was really with the lack of news this week, it was really the headliner news. Somebody with the profile of Hex speaking out on uh, just the egregiousness that it's been. And like you said, the hands are tied. I think like from, I don't really know much about her, but like Joanna Ferries, like everybody spoke so highly of her and now she's moved on to like head of like competitive, I believe at Activision or something like along those, she's just, like a really high title at Activision now, um, which is obviously good for her, but I kind of have a feeling that's maybe one of the reasons she left. Her hands were so tied, and she just, no matter what she tried to do, she just couldn't get anywhere because they just don't seem to care. So maybe that's the one hope I had when I saw that she was going to like the competitive side at like the top of Activision. I was like, hey, she knows the struggles of the CDL. And like people have said, the chain of command is so long to get through at Activision that it takes forever. But maybe she'll have an impact because I know she is on the competitive side of things in an even higher role now. Uh, and she always seemed to do such good things for the CDL and at least tried to push for good things. So hopefully she's able to enact some change because I know she had a pretty good relationship with Hex as well. I think she went on the eavesdrop and stuff. So hopefully yeah. she can enact some change. Mm -hmm. But that's really the only news we had. If if you don't have anything else to say on that, we can jump into our New Year's resolutions and start offering teams some free advice that I know they want so bad. <laughs> Let's get into that. <laughs> All right. I think basically what we're doing here is we're just going to go in alphabetical order of the teams. We didn't really know a good way to like randomize them. And actually, when you go in alphabetical order, it kind of balances out the teams that are really good and like the middle teams. It actually kind of like fluctuates pretty well. But admittedly, it's not fully in alphabetical order because we got to the bottom. We were like, wait, are we missing a team? And then we we're like, oh, yeah, Boston exists now. So Boston's going to be last. So it's going to be a little out of order. Obviously, they would usually be the second team if you're going by uh, city names, but they're going down. To the bottom, so they'll be last. But otherwise, alphabetical order, we're going to go along like that. First team, Atlanta phase. You want to go first for the first resolution, or you want me to go? Yeah, I'll 
I'll jump in because I actually have a couple. Uh, I'm actually pretty impassioned about my phase uh, resolution here. Okay, um, I actually am too. So th this is probably the one you wouldn't think we'd be, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say. I would like to see phase produce more content and market their players. Okay. Um, I feel like an organization as big as phase, I mean, they're supposed to be going public at some point. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they already did. Um, but obviously they have a lot of like resources and backing and clout for lack of a better term within the, uh, like influencer and competitive and like esports scene. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't think it'd be too much to ask for like, like a phase podcast or like, you know, like kind of like not that they have to rip off everything that optic does or something, but, uh, yeah. You know, like if we could see like the four guys, like, you know, doing something outside of gaming or like, you know, a bit like a 10 minute video or, you know, kind of like how other teams produce content, um, just like something fun or like get to know the, like, because I feel like all the only time we like see Simpa, BZ, Cellium or Arsides is like on the, on the stage or like, in a short little like blip like an interview with lottie or something like like we don't really know who they are and i feel like a team and players as good as them they deserve to be you know put in the limelight a little bit more um mm -hmm. and I, I don't maybe i'm missing all of their content or something but i'm just not seeing anything uh remotely uh you know, substantial from phase. And I'd really, I'd be, I mean, personally for me, I'd really like to get to know like who is like a BZ, who is simp. Like, I think yeah. we got a little bit of exposure to Arsides when he was on Huntsman, uh, you know, for that year. Um, but I, I mean, personally, I mean, I think like the majority of my attachment to the competitive Call of Duty scene is like the personalities. And I feel like 100% adding the, uh, the phase guys would be just such a big boost to not only my enjoyment and viewership for the league, but for a lot of other people too. So that's my phase new year's resolution. Yeah. I, I love that one. I, you know, me, I'm if all 12 teams, I'd be okay with that resolution for all 12 teams, develop your players. Cause I'm like you said, a lot of your like attachment to competitive call of duty and your interest lies in a lot of the players and the personalities and stuff. And I will always be 100% on that train that so many people, myself included, like you just said, yourself included, I bet you a, a vast majority of the fans of competitive call of duty first got attached by watching an optic video or some kind of like stream where they, they learned about competitive call of duty. And then from there on, they went to learn about the personalities and it's like the main esport where you can actually learn about the personalities of the players. So I feel like, that's a good resolution for anyone, but especially phase because this is not only like people might not be as interested to learn about like the Paris personalities if they're a bottom team, but this is the top team in the league. Like you said, you want to learn more about Simp and Abizi. These are like arguably the top two players in the league. Like it's really intriguing to potentially learn more about these guys because you feel like there's just so much we have to learn. I mean, these are like the top two players in the league. How can we not want to learn more about them? So I, I really like that one. Um, I kind of went a different route, but I think this one also applies pretty well. I, I said, I think their goal for the year, maybe the resolution should be to foster continued team chemistry because of their like wanted status as a dynasty. I think most dynasties we see fizzle out, the optic dynasty fizzled out because of egos and uh, maybe the team chemistry was off because they all just like thought they were the best and, you know, wanted to be the best. And then you've got, um, the Cole dynasty really fizzled out because of egos in a way, and they just like couldn't play together. You know, the, the Fariko, if you want to call that one a dynasty, definitely fizzled out because of egos and personalities. So I feel like if they could just like kind of uh, foster this this relationship that they seem to still have, they seem to have a really good relationship still. If they can just continue to build that up and um, not try to force things, make sure like they just leave everything on the table, always talk about their issues so they don't kind of like bubble over and continue to build that. I don't see a way that they couldn't be arguably the greatest dynasty ever or one of the greatest dynasties i just think that's the only way that can this team can be broken up or anything get in the way of them is if they let egos boil over so just continue to foster that chemistry and keep growing it is what i want them to set their goals on this year yeah that's a that's a good one i see like i that's just not something that's on my radar right now for phase so maybe that's why i wasn't even thinking yeah. about it but like they just seem like they just gel so well and like I don't know, like their their banter on Twitter and stuff is like none of it is like it doesn't seem like there's any egos there. Yeah, and um, at least for me, that's really the reason I went into it was because 
honestly, like as somebody who watched all the content I could in the Jetpack days and watching the Optic Dynasty, it never seemed like that either. Scump and Former were like the best of friends ever. And then all of a sudden, uh, like shortly, a little bit after that, it seemed like they just hated each other. And that's the reason the Dynasty broke up is because they couldn't stand each other. So like, it seems like it can go in an instant the second you start losing or maybe people think that they're better than the other. I don't see this as much with that team because they seem to gel, like you said, but there's always that possibility in any sport or team sport when you start winning constantly. It's always going to be those people that maybe their egos get inflated and that can get in the way. So that's I'm just looking out to maybe the future to like almost be preventative and avoid that from happening because I can't see like an in-game way that they need to grow content. Obviously, every team can grow on that, like you said, but especially them because they're a top team. But I just I just like the idea of them like before it even could potentially become an issue, just knock it away because they have potential to be the best dynasty ever. So I just don't want their egos to get in the way. Yeah, that's fair. You want to jump into the next one or anything else? No, I think we can jump into Florida. Um, All right. I'm interested to hear what you have there. I For Florida, it was just weird because this is just a team that, like, they're just so odd to me, and I'm not super high on them. Uh, and they just, honestly, of all the teams going into this year, they're the team that excites me the least to watch, I think. Like, they're one of the teams I'm just not excited about. And maybe that's part of the reason I went with this. I just want them to find a star player and make a decision on who to build around for the future because um, obviously like after the Modern Warfare season it seemed like we potentially had some stars in Awakening. Obviously Pharaoh and unfortunate circumstances happened there, but Awakening seemed like a star. Now we're not so sure. Neptune maybe seemed like a potential star. They let him go. Uh, now they have Skies in Awakening. Both people who we maybe think have some star potential. They pick up uh, Dave Patey, who apparently we maybe think has some star potential. It's just like they have a lot of players that don't seem to fit together. They have three ARs in their team. It's just like I want them this year to maybe be competitive, but I want them to find one player, uh, especially having three ARs, that they just like feel like this is our guy. He can be good in content. He's a good player. And if that Sky is great, if that's Awakening, great. If that's Dave Patey, great. But I want them to find one guy that they feel confident in and like make him their building block for the foreseeable future. Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe they can uh, choose to invest in their players, or their like invest in one of their players. <laughs> I kind of knew that was coming right as you came in. I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like it. Mine uh, for the mutineers was uh, be open to change. Okay, um, I like that one because I'm not sure that we're gonna see, um, you know, this three AR like team team of uh, Awakening Skies and Dave. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna work for the entire season. Um, you know, generally we see the game start out a little bit slower, so maybe ARs will have an advantage, but once teams learn how to play fast, um, you know, it seems like the the meta progresses to majority of the map being subs. And I'm just not not that I'm questioning if Awakening can run a primary so like, you know, be a be a sub or not. But I'm just like I if if it if it comes to the point where they're you know on the like maybe on the bubble for you know champs or something like their their points like they're they're hanging on that seven eight spot like they were last year. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I I would want them to be open to change. So whether that's bringing in yees, um, or doing something else, um to make a change or just like even finding a way to play more cohesively so whether it's like a role swap or you know i don't know uh you know you can think of any uh possibility but i would just you know i wouldn't want them to be stuck in their ways of like you know we're just going to ride it out and you know see what see whatever happens um yeah i i don't know i'm just i'm you know, like you said, I'm not too high on Mutineers. I'm not too excited about watching them play. But, you know, sometimes those are the teams that make us, like, they surprise us the most in the regular season. So yeah, I'm, sure. I'm hoping I'm hoping that'll be the case with Florida. Um, because I, I really do like their, like, I, I don't have anything negative to say about their, their branding or their, uh, you know, it seems like their ownership is pretty good down there, too. Um, Mm -hmm. I think like Ben Spont or somebody or Spoon and then uh, like Ogre 2 or whoever is mm -hmm. down there. So yeah, I mean, I'm just be open to change. Uh, you know, if 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 that means having to bring in another player or whatever, just uh, you know, 
make make it happen. Yeah, I like that one. I think we're almost kind of on the same page in a way. Like you want them to be open to change to like try out people and just like be flexible with whatever this year brings. And I kind of want them to do the same thing. Be open minded, but like at the same time, hone in your focus and at least try to like create a vision for what you want going forward and like find a player because they've had a lot of turnover every year. They've had just a turnover in their team. And at some point you have to find a player that you really like and you want to build around and or you have to decide that you don't want to build around any of them and like find a player out there in free agency but you've got to kind of establish an identity at some point they kind of establish an identity of like the team that picks up like the people out of nowhere from challengers and takes shots on them but at some point you've got to actually take one of those shots and like build around them i guess they kind of have with big wake but it hasn't been successful so at some point you gotta switch it up but i think we're kind of on the same page i like that we just be open to like whatever this year might bring to them basically yeah, and I mean one last thing, really quick. Uh, you know, they were really good about about like bringing in new players and making them mm-hmm. turn into like studs. Like they they brought in Pharaoh when Pristini went to the bench in Modern Warfare, mm-hmm. and Pharaoh turned out to be like, in my opinion, probably like could have been an MVP of the For league. Sure. You know, they won three events, um, and uh, and then they bring in Awakening, obviously, and Awakening's like just this like otherworldly beast like you know people were accusing him of cheating Mm -hmm. uh you know showing how good he is and then um yeah and then this year they or this past season they brought in neptune and neptune turned and turned out to be like you know not a bust i mean uh, he he didn't really like take the league by storm but he was a really you know solid player yeah showed a lot of potential uh, yeah but like like you said with the high turnover um maybe you'd like to see one of those guys turn into your franchise player Mm mm-hmm yeah, I I agree like wholeheartedly with that. I also have something kind of along the same lines for our next team in a way, uh, not really, but somewhat along that roster building side of resolutions with London. So I don't know if you want me to kick it off with that one or if you uh, want to go. I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, London is the is like our only true EU team right now. Uh, yep. You know they're based in obviously in the UK, London, and they have an all like English roster. Uh, so I would just love to see them, and this is what my thing is: make a brand. Yeah. Um, you know they have the entire European continent to play with uh, as far as like bring. Um, bring in like a fan base and really make like a vocal presence on social media and make content if that's what they choose to do. Um, you know, I, I just feel like our, our uh, European brethren are just like thirsting so hard <laughs> for a, like f- no, to, to be passionate about their team. And, you know, now that we see them, uh, you know, hopefully building around this Afro, uh, this like core of Afro, uh, I would just hope that they can turn this into something bigger than just like a one-off season or something. Uh, kind of like tying it into mutineers, like build like build around Afro, like really go all in on you know on your brand and on Afro and on this team that you have this year. And uh, I don't know, I just like I I, I want it for them. So I don't know. If, if 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 that made sense or not, but uh. yeah, definitely. I I had something similar to kind of what we had with Florida, and I think our resolutions, if they combine them, would be like perfect because my resolution, if it came true, would help your resolution a lot. Uh, I want them to just hold a consistent team in place. I think they've just had so much shifting since really both years of the CDL that just hasn't allowed them to really gel and build that potential brand that. They seem so active on social media, like on Twitter and stuff, and they seem like a team that has like a lot of personality, at least from their social media, that they would like to build a brand, but they haven't had a consistent team in place. I like I can't remember exactly who subbed in for them, but they had like rated and jured in initially in Modern Warfare, and they got subbed out pretty quickly. And then from there, they had a pretty consistent roster, but they then pretty much flipped the whole roster going into uh, Cold War, and then in Cold War, they had. Uh, 
well, I mean, they had Parasite come in for a little bit because Zero's visa issues. And then obviously the whole thing happened with Alex. Personal issues, you don't really know what happened there, but it was another substitute. And then when he was ready to come back, they took out Zed, they flipped him in, and then like Afro came in. And there's just no consistency in the roster. There's so many roster changes happening. And now you've got a roster where you've got a veteran in Zero and three young guns that we think that really there's no ceiling for. They have ridiculously high ceiling. Um, we think they could be top players. We think Afro could be a potential MVP type player. We think Nasty could be just a fantastic player. We don't really know his ceiling because we haven't seen too much of him. People are saying that Gizmo could be a disgusting player. And then you've got the veteran and Zero. They almost have a brand established already there. Just all the young guys and a vet. And it seems like everything's in place for them to be a potentially like star-studded roster if these young guys pan out. But they might start slow. And if they start slow, I don't want them to just make a roster change. I want them to hold a consistent team in place, try to build that brand, and just let the young talent flourish, basically. Because this might be a rough year, standings-wise, but if they can come out of this year confident in the three young players at least, that'll at least kind of establish like a culture for them and just a vision going forward where like you're not lost. Because both off-seasons, they've been lost trying to rebuild the roster. And it'd be really nice if they could start a year with a good foundation instead of just being lost going into the next year like they have been every time in the CDL. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a you know a good one two pairing with mine as well. So I mean, yeah, if they hold a consistent team, it only makes content easier. You can make almost like a process type documentary in the team all year, hopefully. Well that'd be that'd be fun. Especially with a it'd be so much different, I feel like, from the perspective of like Obviously, this like you said, this is the only like fully like a, this has got to be the only team with uh, no NA players on it. So it, it'd be interesting just to see it from a different perspective um, for people that have maybe completely different perspectives because they're the only non NA people. They're they're from the UK, like you said. So I'd I'd be down if they if our resolutions come true, they produce a bunch of content and they keep this team all year. I think we'd both be pretty hyped about that. All right. Next team, LAG. This is kind of one where I didn't really fully know where to go with it because I thought the easy answer was like makes her slasher and gunless don't rip each other's heads off. Because <laughs> uh, we've seen that in the past. But I went just I want them to continue this upward momentum they have going with the brand. I feel like LAG was so down in the dumps as a brand, as a team, as everything before this offseason. And I feel like uh, what's his name? Alex Rubin uh, has like kind of come out and He's been pretty vocal. He went on the flank and stuff, and people seem to really be gravitating towards him and like him as as a GM, I believe he is, of their team and as a personality. And people just really seem to be gravitating towards this team. They've now finally spent money. They have a roster that we think could be pretty good. They've made a lot of content. And I think people have now gone from this perception of LAG being like the least followed team and just like they don't do anything. The roster sucks. They don't make content. It's now like, hey, they're actually trying with the roster. They're making solid content. They're at least putting in an effort to do that and like i feel like people are really up on lag right now so i want them to not just like stop the content and like stop this transparency on social media and stuff when the season starts i want them to keep this upward momentum going because it can only be good for the cdl if one of the uh obviously one la team is super popular with the thieves but if lag can start to rival that and become a really popular team it can only be good for the league to have two super popular teams in kind of the biggest city really uh for media in america yeah, my uh, I I like the upward trend uh, tilt on it. Um, my resolution for the gorillas would be to compete on a consistent basis. Um, I know that's mm -hmm. more just like maybe that's like their goal, but like, like if I was like, oh, my goal is to like, you know, lose fifty pounds this year, like you know, lose weight every month or something, or you know, go yeah. to the gym more often or something. I'd like those are goals. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people make those, but, you know, it's, it's kind of generic, but, like, um, you know, if, if LAG can compete on a consistent basis, I feel like that would be such a a step up from whatever they've been doing the last two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, with the, with the whole roster turnover from Modern Warfare into Cold War, um, you know, they, they were really bottom of the barrel both years, and now it seems like they've really invested into... Uh, you know, big name firepower. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just really hope that this team uh, can be another uh, team where I don't feel like I sh should just turn the stream off and look at the box score at the end of the match. Um, 
like I I want to stick around for an LAG for uh, sure squad and like you know when it comes down to these initial matches like I'm gonna be really like laser focused in I'm like you know this team like should have all the makings to play really well yeah um so yeah that that's gonna be my uh my resolution for the gorillas here is just compete on a consistent basis don't like show up one weekend and then go away for two months um i'd rather see them like if if they're not gonna win like ever like they're probably not gonna win every single match but i'd at least like to see them like you know play like 500 baseball or something you know like just mm-hmm. hang around, hang around, make it interesting, like be in the conversation for like the seven, eight, nine spot for champs or something, you know, like at the very minimum. I, I think they could do a lot higher if they really play well. But, you know, I'm not gonna get too been out of shape about them. If that yeah, makes I, sense. Yeah, I like that because I also think like this is by far the most positive we've ever talked about LAG going into a year in any facet, content, brand, team, makeup, anything. Uh, and yeah, I think I like both of them as well because yeah, I, I want them to continue this upward trend with the brand, like I said, but I also like yours, like not only do they need to keep the content going, but they have to show us that like by spending this money and building a team, we think can be successful, that they can actually be consistently successful. And I, I agree. I think really just like they're a team that I guess there's different ways you could define their success. Like you said, uh, you, you expect them to, at the very least to be competing for that seven, eight, nine spot to like maybe make champs. I expect that as well. I like, I feel like they're a team that should be at every major. They should be in the top eight. They should be able to make that because of the caliber of players they have on their roster and how much they spent on it. Like we're expecting this team to be good. So I'm interested, but I think it is a good sign that we're both like, you're talking about LAG, like competing for a spot at champs and i'm talking about them the fact that they have upward momentum going with their brand right now i think that's a positive sign they're one team that we can really shout out with these resolutions because going into last year would have been like like do anything show that you care but now they've they've done that so shout out to lag because they're actually a team that's making pretty positive strides from year two to three Mm -hmm. all right the other la team la thieves this one's a little bit more interesting because we feel like they've got a good roster i think i think we both feel that way uh obviously content wise they're top notch they're right up there there's maybe not a lot of improvements they can make there i kind of have just an odd one and i don't think there's maybe as much discussion about it so i might just like throw mine out there first and see where you went but i said just don't lose full composure at online play keep your head in the game because i think we've seen octane the last couple years completely lose his mind on the fact that he's playing online and basically from all things we've seen we're going to be playing some online for league uh for seeding matches and stuff and I thought they had said that potentially they're going to travel to Texas uh, every week for like online matches if that was a thing, but I don't know if that's fully true. They might have to play some from LA since they're all living out there, and obviously we know the California connection doesn't tend to be as good, and Octane has had no success with online Call of Duty the last couple of years, and obviously if they're all in LA, that might make it tough. Just keep your composure, don't lose full, and don't let the fact that you're playing online just completely take over your and like cloud your mental because seems like I could easily see that happening to this team. So that, that's my New Year's resolution since it was tough because I feel like they're pretty solid all around on branding and a team. So I just I just want to see them keep their head in the game. That's really good. I love that. Um, <laughs> you know, especially since I'm like an Octane stan. So, uh, yeah, and we yeah. know this team has a talent. That's not the issue. Exactly. It's, they, they just they have to keep the team chemistry and the mental side of it, right? And I could I could see it going wrong with this team since they're playing potentially from California with their history with online. Mm-hmm. Um, mine for them is Believe in Draza. Okay, I like um, that. I don't want to see Draza get scapegoated. Uh, if this team... Yeah. Um, especially since, like, we've seen, like, the narrative around him be like, you know, this guy's really good, but, you know, he just doesn't get, like, the appreciation that, uh, you know, maybe he deserves. Uh, you know, he was brought in kind of late game in Modern Warfare... And then really had to like reprove himself in Cold War um, to stay on the team. And obviously, LAT had all these like roster moves, and he was out and he was playing sub, he was playing AR, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and playing with a bunch of different teammates. And now he's got like, you know, by all accounts, this is like the team that they wanted, um, you know, given the circumstances. And I just really want them to believe in Draza because I think he's a phenomenal player and uh, I don't know I just like um, 
I, I I wouldn't want him to get like bear the brunt of the the rage if they're not perf- like if they don't perform well for like a stage or two. Um, you know, I, I I would want them to work through their team issues more than I would want them to see like say like okay, Draws is gone and we're gonna get like the next guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so not so much like ride it out with Draza, but like just like believe in him and like maybe maybe he's gonna be the the guy that you need to build around because maybe he is that good. I don't know. Um, that's for their that's for their team and like statisticians to assess that and stuff. But like maybe you don't have to build around Octane or Kenny. Maybe you maybe it's maybe it's Draza they have to build around. You know, I don't know. That's just a new a new a new uh. A new take on that. I don't know if you what 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 do you think about that? I like that. Uh, obviously, kind of like you are for Octon. I'm kind of a Kenny stan, so I still feel like he's probably the player to build around. But I like that because you never know. There's so much potential. We feel like we have to unlock with Draza because this is potentially his first year that he's actually going to be a full time player. Because obviously he subbed in Modern Warfare and he was on the roster to start in Cold War. So I like that one because who knows? I mean, we've seen him look. Very good in Modern Warfare when he came in. He looked very good last year when he came in. And, I mean, maybe with a full year with probably the best team he's been a part of, he really could be fully unlocked. And you never know. You always have to be open-minded because you always may think you have your player that you're going to build around. But somebody could just come around and change that. And he seems like a super likable guy. And like you said, everybody seems to think he's a very good player from, like, all the pros. Everybody seems to think he's solid. So I'm I'm fully open to keeping an open mind and maybe realizing Draza's the player to build around. I like that one a lot because I think, like you said with your Florida one, the worst thing you can do is be closed-minded and you think, like, Kenny and Envoy and all these guys seem like, for sure, the people that you're going to build around, but why can't Draza be part of that core group? Uh, he might not be, like, the bigger established name like some of these guys, but I don't see any reason he can't be, so I, I really like that one a lot. All right, you ready to move on to Minnesota Rocker, your team? I th- I mean, <laughs> I might say it first so you can regain your composure because I think you're really going to like mine. Okay. Mine, um, it's pretty simple. All right. It's Unlock Standy the Superstar. <laughs> I think we've seen, obviously, Standy have superstar moments. There is no question the guy's got superstar potential. That's not what I'm saying here. I mean, he was, had superstar moments last year, but I think... This team, in my opinion, kind of took a couple steps back, not because they are they got any worse, but I think a lot of teams got better and they stayed the same. So naturally, it's going to seem like maybe they took a step back just because of how many teams we really believe improved this year in this offseason. And obviously, they could have improved because maybe their team chemistry gets better, but they stayed the same, so it's not as exciting. So maybe they get kind of lost. But I think you've got a guy that's steady and clutch like a Tatch, and Major Maniac's a pretty steady hand at the AR. Uh, and even Priesta, you know he's always going to be a steady, solid, very good flex. But the X-Factor in this team is Standy. If Standy can unlock and be a full-on superstar, they can take the team to new levels. And they're going to need him to be a superstar to take this team past like a middle-of-the-pack team, in my opinion. So I think they just need to fully build their system around just unlocking Standy and trying to make him the MVP-type player that he can be. Keep talking. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Um, I totally agree I with that. I just don't think they're... I don't think they can get like much higher than like top six if they don't let Standy just absolutely right. have his way on the map and, and build their system around him. I don't I can't see them being better than like a sixth place team. Yeah, exactly. And that goes down to like having a superstar SMG presence on the map. Yep. Like a guy that can get that extra kill, can and stay alive can be on the rotation. Perfect support. Exactly. Um I think this team is set up really well. Um and it kind of plays into my resolution for them too. Uh, I think we kind of go hand in glove here. Um, and mine is stay the course. Uh, mm-hmm. They, you know, they didn't hit when the dealer offered them a card. Um, you know, I think they're sitting with like, you know, if, if you know, kind of jumping into like a blackjack metaphor. Yeah. You know, they they got dealt like a sixteen or a seven. They got they, they got dealt like a fifteen or a sixteen. Yeah. And they're they're deciding not to hit. And. You know, that's a solid hand, but like the rest of the league is showing like, you know, a, you know they're showing like a king on, you know, <laughs> the dealer's showing a king and like, you know, you know they, they can mm-hmm. flip over another, you know, face card and get 20 and, you know, beat you right there. Um, yeah. But, but you know, to, jumping back from Blackjack because, you know, I'm kind of losing myself there too, but uh, 
I really like this team. I think they have all the pieces there. Um, they just need to unlock themselves. Um, and, you know, that's not just going to be Standy playing out of his mind. It's going to be uh, Major playing really solid AR. And it's going to be Attach and Priest to kind of filling those gaps between Standy and Major. Um, because, like, you know, obviously Standy's got that you know, like superstar MVP caliber uh, ceiling. And Attach can complement him so well. Attach is, um, like, the perfect compliment to a superstar smg yeah i mean attach is like a chameleon like he can like he can yeah. like bend into any he can blend into any shape that he needs to to kind of mm -hmm. like unlock the rest of his team and he can also step up and provide those moments when he needs to mm -hmm. and then obviously priesta i ride hard for priesta as well yep. um and i think that he's you know he's had a couple like you know eh, years um as far as like his own individual um like standing as like where he would be on a tier list or something like a lot of people are just like oh priesta you know i haven't really seen him do much but you know he's still there like he's still playing well but he's not like an s tier but um you know but getting back to it i'd like to see him stay the course um they've got to ride out this year uh for better or for worse i don't think that they should make a change yeah. um unless it's just like terrible and the vibes are yeah, just bottom or something yeah, and they're and they're like you know, coming to fists with each other in in yeah. practice or something like they they've got to ride it out and figure it out because obviously we saw the payoff uh, for them really late in the game with stage five coming back and winning that major and I think that was the major impetus for them staying together. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see them stay the course, stay together as a cohesive unit. They have a really good coaching staff. They brought in Looney uh to add to their squad i think they uh they brought in nubsy too i believe um yeah for they... something yeah some kind of like operations yeah. i don't know if it's actually right. coaching or but not. i mean i mean yeah. they're they're not afraid to build up their their brand and their uh obviously they have one of the better branding in league two so that they've they've got a lot of upward momentum uh so i'd like to see them just stick with the personnel they have stick with the players and uh see we'll see how that plays out yeah, I like that a lot. I I kind of want to just like maybe like drop this nugget and then leave it because it might be something that we could discuss in a bull predictions episode potentially coming up in a couple weeks. But uh, I've always like this offseason, I've been a little lower on Rocker. I do still think it's certainly possible that they just find themselves as a middle of the road sixth through eighth team. But I do see if we're talking dark horse and where a team's ceiling is, I do think they also have a relatively high ceiling because I think this team could be like a last year's Cold War ultra if they hit their perfect ceiling of where they could be because they seem like that team that may not have as much talent as some of the other teams but they're going to be so perfect on teamwork and if they can unlock standy like toronto was able to unlock cammy as a superstar you could see attach kind of filling in that band's role of really being a leader that steps up also in the kills department uh and then you're just going to need somebody to step up and be that superstar uh like insight was maybe major maniac can do that maybe priesta can kind of step into a cami type role but i feel like with the the solid teamwork that this team could have maybe the best teamwork in the league we're looking at since they're one of the only teams that carried over a full roster they're looking at a ceiling of maybe if all this clicks potentially being like a rocker from or not a rocker an ultra from last year where they are just super steady stay the course as a team and if they do what you say and stay the course i could see them consistently finishing as a top four team potentially because of how great their teamwork is all right, we can get more into that maybe in bowl predictions when we start to drop some stuff. And I think you might have a bowl prediction for the Rocker because that might be your team this year. But we've got subliners up next. You want to take this one with the lead? Yeah, my uh, my resolution for them is to breathe and be patient. Okay, um, mine's a little bit similar, but yeah. I think that uh, you know this team, they've got Krim, Clay, Hydra, Neptune. I think that they might... That yeah, you know, who knows how they're gonna start off the year? Um, I think they're gonna be they're gonna hang around all year. They're gonna they're you know they ha they've got a pretty high floor in that regard. Um, mm. yeah. but you know if, if they're not seeing like obviously they they know that they should probably be playing in like their fair share of grand finals and stuff based on like the names and the potential that they have. But I thought. I'd, you know, if they're not seeing those results right off the bat, I, I just want them to like just you know 
take a step back and settle down and not get too out over their skis about things like and like you know just start making more problems for themselves than they need to um mm-hmm. you know e- even if it's like you know they get bumped down to like the losers bracket in the first major or something like just take it all in stride it's one match at a time one game mode at a time like just i don't know like i and because i i, I think this team definitely could like blow up with two big personalities like clay and crim and then you have like two kind of like passive newish players and neptune and hydra <laughs> like you know if all of a sudden clay and crim are like on their bullshit and like yeah you know, i don't know like they've got to keep each other in check they just gotta like you know take a step back let things like let things play out uh it's not all gonna go to hell in one day you know mm-hmm yeah, I actually, you know, it's kind of funny, as especially with that last thing that you just said. Mine is very similar to this. I actually just said to create a good work environment for the whole team that they can enjoy playing in. Because it seems like last year, Krim was super stressed out with his team environment, didn't enjoy it at all. Clay obviously was super stressed out with his team environment because he even went so far as to take a break that um, I believe a lot of it had to do with his mental health wasn't in a great spot because of how stressed he was with everything. Uh, I don't know that the Neptune situation was the best either. It seemed like him and Big Wake didn't get along from the stuff that came out. And Hydra, I think he's just vibing all the time. I don't really know uh, if he had any issues with it, but they have a lot of players, uh, for sure two, maybe even three, and I don't know too much about Hydra's situation, but it seems like a lot of players that were just stressed last year and did not enjoy their team environment. So I know sometimes Krim teams can struggle with that because Krim is really hard on his teammates because he just wants the best out of them. So uh, it's hard to blame him for it because it's it's hard to blame somebody for just wanting to get the best out of their teammates in the best way that they think possible. But kind of like along the lines that you said, I don't have too much to say on it because that's just what I want to see them do. I want to see them create a good work environment for the whole team that every player feels good and comfortable in and not super stressed out where they can air out their issues if they have them, uh, but not let it turn into a yelling match like it potentially could with Krim and Clay, but they've worked together so many times that I don't think that'll be an issue, but I just want them to be able to enjoy the year. Like they got to remember that it is their job and it's, it's stressful, I'm sure. But at the same time, they're also playing call of duty for a living. It's a super great job. and just create that good positive environment where they're not all just so stressed out of their minds. Like it seemed like uh, at least Krim and Clay were last year. Because with creating that environment also, it's just, gonna naturally when you're having more fun and enjoying yourself and not stress all the time it's just gonna naturally create probably better results i would think yeah i, I like that a lot and, and i think it should be pretty easy for them because i don't i don't see this team being a bad team almost it's almost impossible in my opinion for this team to end up not being uh, a top six team for sure top eight making champs it's almost impossible for them not to be so i uh, i think that's really the main thing for them is just don't allow the team chemistry to blow up pretty much because I don't see a way they're not successful otherwise. All right. You want to move on to Optic? Yeah, let's go. All right. So for my resolution for Optic, I just said, I don't know, it's it's tough because obviously I was thinking about like, they haven't won in a while. Do we want them to win? Obviously they do. <laughs> but uh, my main thing is, what do we know about Optic? Obviously they're always going to be the most popular. Last year they didn't have the greatest success, but like they were still a solid. Like you, you never went into an event thinking Optic couldn't. Like we thought at any time Optic could beat anybody. That wasn't off the table. So we know that they're always pretty good, pretty competitive. I want them to build the brand of Dashi, Shotzi, and Illy to carry the brand post Scump and carry the brand's legacy. Because you know, not saying Scump doesn't have it anymore. Scump is still a fantastic player. He's still a top player in the CDL. He could probably still play for the foreseeable future until he chooses to be done. But you never know. He could randomly like with the quality of the games and them not really caring, you, know, you never know. Scump could at any point after this year, after next year, you never know. He could just hang it up. And when he hangs it up, that's the number one attraction of the league. That's the most popular player. We need to see somebody else step up and kind of carry that torch. I feel like Dashi's brand has grown a lot and he streamed a lot more and stuff. Uh, and Shotzi and Illy seem to be in a lot of content and they seem pretty good in it, but I'd like to see them continue to develop those three and really unlock their potential as content creators and as personalities because i mean when scum's gone somebody's gonna have to carry that torch i think maybe envoy and some of the la thieves guys could be some of the guys up next but 
feel like Shotzi is pretty hilarious and he could be that guy to carry it and also very skilled. Same with Illy, obviously same with Dashi, but I just want to see them continue to build those three as brands and work them into content with Scump and stuff because somebody's got to help carry the popularity of the league when Scump's gone. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, kind of looking more uh, like big picture stuff with the with this team. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like I like that a lot. Uh, mine is more focused on like this, uh, the, this specific year and, you know, yeah. especially with this merger, um, be coachable. I like that uh, a lot. You know, uh, I feel like we definitely heard like firsthand from the optic guys that they weren't too focused on like the whole process of getting better and like through coaching and stuff. Um, you know, they, they weren't taking time uh, to fix their mistakes. They kind of rested on their laurels after they beat phase that one in stage five. Uh, they just kind of slacked off. And I feel like that, like, for a team that wants to win and all means probably should win more than they have the last few years. Um, we've seen that teams that are coachable and that uh, are prepared consistently have good results. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this team of star power and, uh, you know, super um, charismatic people as well like skump dashy shotzi and like illy all these brands that are getting yeah uh more and more attention now um i want them to be coachable i want them to you know the classic like this is our year mantra like i think this could be their year if they really um you know if they take themselves seriously and dedicate themselves to winning and getting better I think that this could really be a great year for them. Um, but, you know, it's going to take some, you know, it's going to take some effort on their part. Mm -hmm. So, uh, certainly, I don't know. That's just something I want to see from them. I agree with that. I really, really like that one because that's something we've seen too. Like, not only be coachable, but like they said, like, it, it, I think it was Envoy that said it. I'm not fully sure, but they were like, yeah, Troy. I know he said Troy Sender was like, the best coach ever and he's like a great coach but he's like yeah but we just like didn't listen to him like didn't like allow him to like really coach us and like help us out he tried his best but you know we just didn't listen like that can't happen uh you got rambo ray and sender two great call of duty minds that are going to try to help you as best they can you could argue rambo is one of the better call of duty minds because a lot of the ways that people play today are because rambo basically came up with them back in the day so like when you're just like brushing off and being like yeah coach tried to help but we didn't listen that can't happen i agree that's you've got to be coachable and part of being coachable to me also comes with that that mantra that's really happened with optic every year since black ops 3 that i can remember is they are usually super good to start the year and then they just decide that they don't really need to practice because they're really good and i don't know how it can happen like seven years in a row that you start really well and just don't think you have to practice like you think after like seven tries it eventually hits you that you know hey Teams are going to catch up because other players are good and we're not the only good players, but it seems to always happen. I think that's part of being coachable too. Like when your coach wants you to show up for practice at a certain time, you show up. And I don't think Rambo's going to take any BS. So I think they might fulfill your fulfill your resolution there. But I like that one a lot. Just, just be coachable and allow yourself to actually learn and continue to grind, basically. I like that one. All right. I have time for some fun. Oh, time for the team that I, I just like see their name and I just like I instantly I was like excited, you know, talking about optic in the future of the CDL. And I now I just I just get pissed looking at this name Paris. Um, I don't really have a good direction to go with them. I literally wrote down establish literally any identity identity. It's like the meme with the guy like poking them with a stick saying do something. That's literally <laughs> what I want them to do. I want I want them to establish literally any identity possible like whether that's with the team with their brand just like anything because like i feel like paris has been in the league obviously since its inception and i don't know anything about them i don't know anything about what kind of brand what kind of ownership group they have uh what kind of fan base they have or are hoping to have because who knows if they have one i they haven't had a consistent player that i can like look at and be like hey this is paris's guy that i know his personality like do anything establish your players as brands establish some kind of identity for your team like they just go dark on social media for months at a time. Just literally anything that I can kind of like look at the Paris Legion logo and be like, that's the first thing I think of. Like, first thing I think of right now is just disappointment. <laughs> like, 
I, I just want them to establish any kind of brand or identity. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, mine right along the same lines. Uh, look alive. Okay. Um, you know, do do something, do anything. Uh, I'll go over. Uh, pay me the league minimum. I'll be your social media guy for. Uh, shoot. Yeah. I'll, I'll post three times a day. Uh, I'll make fire memes, and I will. Uh, guaranteed to up your engagements. Um, so yeah, can't that's get much my, worse. That's my resume. Uh, <laughs> see my Twitter in the in the description. I will gladly move to Paris if that's what's required. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, just look alive though. Honestly, do anything. Um, do something to show even, you have a pulse. <laughs> even even just post on social media, like that's like the very bare minimum that you should do as a team or as an organization. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm not gonna be like out here crying for them to post like content videos and stuff. Like they don't even have a content team from anything that I know. Well, if they do, they're um, not really doing the job. <laughs> exactly. Um. So, yeah. Uh. Just do anything you know make me feel something for your team except yeah, like, for like except for like this like undying pity for like anybody that plays for your team yeah uh, i also like i feel like we like with every team even though some teams don't have good established content you know but like i feel like if you look at every team you kind of have like a somewhat general idea of who they are in your head i feel like at least with paris i just have nothing i don't i i think you probably would agree just there's just nothing when i think of them You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean I, I, I have no internal feeling towards the team except yeah. for like damn, like we have to endure another year of Paris Legion. Like at <laughs> least I mean the the closest thing they did was in uh was in Modern Warfare when they actually like won towards the end. They won like they were like in the grand finals or something of one of the last homestand, online homestands, I believe. Or they were in the semifinal or something or other. And uh, it was actually kind of exciting because, like, we hadn't seen them do anything all year. And it was like, wow, these yeah. guys are actually pretty good. Like, the Kismet, Dens, Luca Shocks, and some other guy. See, <laughs> like, I, I should, like, we should be able to recite these names, but we can't. Like, yeah. I, like, I could ask you right now, like, who played for, like, you know, London in Modern Warfare, and you should be able to tell me that because at least they had like some kind of identity. You know, yeah, but Paris just has nothing, so yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, and you know what? They don't give us any airtime of their players, so we don't need to give them any more airtime on the podcast. We can move. Thank on. you. <laughs> um, next one, Seattle, a team that also really hasn't given us a whole lot, I guess, but they have a little bit more of a hope this year. I think this is the most hope we've had for them really coming into a year. I guess maybe going into Modern Warfare, we kind of hoped because of all the big names they had, but obviously that was shut down pretty quick, but mine's pretty simple and you might be a little shocked by it because I may have bashed this player a little bit in the past, but I literally wrote down, listen to accuracy. Oh. I know I know. Sib can be a hothead from everything we heard. We've heard a lot of people say those two are not going to work together because they're not going to get along, but Guess what? If you're a Sib, I know you've got all the talent in the world, but you're a younger player, and I just guarantee you accuracy knows more in-game than you do about how to play and the correct way to play and really how to build a team that's successful. Uh, and I don't know too much about Pred uh, or who the heck is the other player on the team? Why am I blanking? Mac. Um, I think Mac is, seems like a player that's pretty like coachable and like pretty moldable. Like I think he'll be fine with accuracy. Obviously, they play together on uh, New York, so I think there'll be no issue there. But And I don't know too much about Pred. Uh, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he'll be pretty coachable, at least I hope. I just want to see Sib mainly and this team just fully give themselves up to accuracy and let him be the leader of the team because that's basically, in from everything I can see, what he's here for is to be the leader of this team, kind of establish their identity. So I just want to see them fully listen to accuracy, let him be the leader, and see where things go from there because I think it could be a rough year to start for them. Seems like they're going to have a slow start unless... Pred and Sib are just absolute superstars to carry this team. Seems like it's going to be probably a rough start. So I just want to see them listen to accuracy and help uh, let him help develop their players and see if they can turn into something special, not just lose full right away. Yeah, that's a interesting one. I, uh, I I like that. I think that's definitely going to play into their success if they do listen to accuracy. Um, 
Yeah, mine is rewrite the script. Um, okay. We've seen, we've yeah. seen two <laughs> years. I mean, almost similar to they've had like a similar trajectory to uh, the gorillas is in terms of like two bad yeah. years, two two new rosters each year, um, essentially, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, but, and, and then, like, you know, there was kind of some bad press on the way going out from, like, Octane and, uh, Nubsy was like, you know, they asked him on his last day, like, when he's like, literally leaving, they're like, hey, who do you recommend to, that we should get as a coach? And he's like, are yeah. you serious? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> like, disrespectful. Um, and, like, you know, the ownership group and, like, they, they didn't listen to, or they didn't do enough to bring in new players for the team or just, like, all this, like, kind of like somewhat negative press but uh you know at the end of the day there's still a league spot and they still fill a roster so um you know this team that they have now i would like to see them like rewrite the script like give seattle a good name again or like give them uh you know with their play with their performances uh you know make seattle a destination for players to go um and not like just an afterthought, like, oh man, like, you know, I really wanted to play for this team, but I got put on like Seattle was the only offer. So like I'm stuck or something like it, it shouldn't be a place that like there should never be a team where players feel stuck. Like, Absolutely you know, oh not. shoot, I got stuck on Paris or I got stuck on London or I got stuck on Florida or something like one some of these teams that aren't like they're like, you know, your blue chip teams or something like rewrite the script and make seattle like give seattle a good name that's all i think that's all you can do at the end of the day yeah i like that one uh it's it's they, like you said same thing as leg two bad years two bad rosters no content no really direction and leg is i think fully turning it around from everything we've seen so far and that's what i'd like to see seattle do too turn around that narrative and really show that you can be a team that we can believe in to go forward i think a lot of that could come with listening to accuracy, like I mentioned, and I, I really like yours because uh, it's it's kind of a team again that we've seen struggle a lot, and we just we just need to see something from them going forward. I like that one. Now we're kind of through our little trip to the bottom of the league, and we're going right back up to the top, and we've got Ultra. I have one that I this is kind of like you were passionate about your light one. I'm pretty passionate about this one because I think it could turn them from being a second place team to a top team, and they have my boy Cami on there, so. I'll mention mine quick, and then uh, I want to get your thoughts on it. I, I think that the number one thing, the resolution I want them to work on, the thing I want them to work on coming into this year is their communication. And that might sound weird because you could argue they're the best communicating team in the league, but I want them to work on bringing up the communication for all players so they don't rely so heavily on Vance being that leader. Because like when you hear the listen-ins, Vance is an absolutely fantastic communicator, and he's really directing the troops really well, but there's not a lot of balance. Uh, there's some good call-outs from guys obviously chiming in because they wouldn't be a successful team without people chiming in and offering their input, but it is so heavily relied on Bance in the comms for this team to have success, and that's not a good recipe for success because what if Bance is just off on a shot calls one day? Maybe his game's a little off, and it, it forces him to be doing so much in that department that it may uh, like hurt his gun skill on that day or hurt his ability to get kills on the map because he's focused so much on the thinking part of the game and not just reacting, which is sometimes what you need to do. Uh, and he's obviously a player with a lot of talent. He could slay out if given that opportunity. I just want them to work on those comms. Maybe find like more of a secondary leader. I mean, Cami is making plays all over the map. Maybe he can step up a little bit and be more involved in the comms. Kleenex is always pretty silent from what we've heard. Get him more involved. And then Insight. He's now in his second year. He's developing more. He's the AR. He's a guy that you'd expect to have a little more time to communicate because he's not as much up there in everything in a million engagements. He's more holding lines of sight and holding angles. Like, get him more involved. I just want to see overall the comms be more balanced. So, Bance is so heavily relied on. And I think with that balance, they could get even better. And I mean, they really can't get too much better than they were last year. They were a consistent top two team. So, if, if they balance out that communication, I could see them even unlocking a higher ceiling. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I think comms is just something that like we don't see on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of harder for people like me or you to really sit back and be like, man, this team just doesn't communicate well. Yeah. Uh, or like, you know, they're too reliant on one guy and it's kind of costing their team. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that's really interesting. Uh, obviously, we know that Bance is like an incredible IGL. 
And, yeah. um, you know, probably he was a little bit too uh, relied upon by the rest of the team for uh, the last year, especially. So mm-hmm. I especially really wants to switch all methods. Who's probably the other like mm-hmm. secondary guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, yeah, theoretically, that should help the entire team uh, pick up like their in-game focus if they're all you know, contributing equally or more equally to the uh, the team communication. So I, I think that's a really good, uh, really good point there, and something that like is a pretty substantial uh, resolution to work towards for them. Yeah. Um, mine is a little bit more like lighthearted. Uh, okay. I said that they need to clutch up. <laughs> um. Obviously, uh, got you know everybody knows that they got like reverse swept five games in a row in major five. Um, but I, I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, like they, they were like a consistent, like top two, top three team all year. And they only had one major win to show for it. Mm. Um, and even though they were consistently there, they were consistently playing on like in winners finals and losers finals and grand finals. Um, but they just didn't like, they only had that one major to show for it, and uh, I really think that one more major win there would have really like cemented them up there with people being like, "Oh yeah, well you know, Ultra is a top like three or four team, but we just kind of forgot about them." Like in, when we're making our power rankings and something, it's like, "Well, where do we really slot Ultra?" Because they really they had one win, and then they were just really consistent. But uh, when it comes down to like the teams that win, they need to clutch up. Um, And I know I could say that for like virtually every team, but I feel like if Ultra just finds a little bit more, like another like, you know, that last bit of effort or last bit of like finesse clutch to, to win a map or to win that last map or something like they, they could easily or not easily. I think that's a little bit uh, condescending to other teams, but they could, you know, they could find themselves winning an event or two in this coming title. Yeah, I like that. I, I definitely think it's a possibility. Um, and I, I like the like the lighthearted jab because you know they lost and that that clutch factor happened against your team. I'm gonna call them your team all year. I'm gonna call okay. you a Minnesota That's fan fair. all year. <laughs> uh, but I like that one a lot. And uh, obviously they're. They're a team that's hard to find a lot of ways to improve because if things stay consistent, we expect them to be right back at the top competing uh, and being one of our favorites to win events this year if if things continue the way that they were going last year. Uh, but we're on to our last team, if you're good with that. Yeah. Boston, they're in here like an afterthought because truthfully, when we were writing our teams, they kind of were an afterthought. <laughs> Obviously, they don't have too much established. We don't even know what their logo looks like yet, but they are a team and we... Uh, we pretty much know their roster, so it's good to talk about them. Because we technically don't know their official roster, I guess, I didn't want to go into that. I went with something pretty simple, and it's sad that this is the standard now, but I literally just said, show that you care. And the reason I say that is because we've got a team like Paris that we don't believe cares as of right now. And you got to believe that since Boston was willing and willing to buy into the league in year three after, you know, maybe a couple shaky years and not showing like a full success of the league uh, up to this point, if they're willing to buy in, you got to believe that that means at least they somewhat believe in this league and they somewhat care. So I literally just want them to show me that they care about this league and want to see it succeed. Uh, and they would do that through putting together a competitive team. If the team isn't competing, making a change or doing something to help fix it, uh, putting out some content, even if the team isn't super successful, just something to build their brand or show that they care about competitive success or ideally both. But I just want them to show that they have a pulse on like Paris and just like be a team that cares and will be a contributing team to the CDL. Yeah, I, I like that. I think, um, you know, it kind of, again, we kind of have similar ones. Um, mine is don't take yourself so seriously. I like that. Um, yeah, I, I think that this team should just, you know, go with the flow um, and not really like get down on their, that down on themselves too, too hard if they're not, having results and you know please for the love of god don't like gut the roster mid-season um because they have some really good uh 
characters in there, uh, namely Zinni and uh, like TJ, I guess as well. Yeah. Although he like his brand could also do from more exposure, uh, just because he's been in the league for a, a few years now. Um, and yeah, but I mean, and especially since they're they're so late to the party, um, it's their first year. We know that they probably have a lot of resources or like a lot of capital resources to uh, be a long-term player in the CDL. But yeah, I'd also like along the lines of you, I'd like to see them uh, show us that they care. Um, hmm. But that doesn't mean that they have to like, if they're not winning right from the get go, they don't have to like drop like a player or something like, or they could, they could, you know, use a substitute, but I, I don't want to see them like, putting like taking themselves so seriously that they're like you know we have to make roster moves we have to do this and that i just like to see them show up on a day-to-day basis play good call of duty um you know be entertaining and just like not get too down on themselves if they're not having results i like that i like that one a lot i think it's it's perfect it's i think ours combined make a good combination like take yourself seriously enough that you actually like care about like content and competing, but also understand that you came in late to the game. You maybe weren't able to get the team you want. So like, don't take yourself so seriously that you just cut all players immediately when it doesn't have success, like ride things out and just like basically show that you're in it for the long haul and not just going to jump ship pretty much and not care. But I like that a lot. I think that's, that's really all we have for resolutions though. Unless you want to dive into something else, we can, we can no. go to our down bad sports moment of the week. Uh, I don't know how you want to kick this one off. I know fantasy success didn't hit you right last week. Uh, I was going to talk about that. I mean, I actually just checked and I actually won one of my semifinals. So I'm going to the championship in the league, but I was going to be down bad about that because I literally lost every semifinal in all my fantasy leagues. But I'm actually, I mean, it's NFL time. It's getting towards the playoffs. Obviously, maybe as we've heard, your team isn't really near the playoffs, but uh, I I have a like honorable mention moment for you when we get to yours if you don't mention it. But the one I'm going to say for myself is I mean the Colts had a fantastic win. Half the team was down with COVID and other injuries. Basically, we were down to some practice squad linemen that had never played snaps at like three different positions. And Carson Wentz found a way to get it done. He threw one of the best throws I've ever seen, rolling out left for basically a dagger touchdown. And the Colts won somehow against a ten and four Cardinals team when they had no business even being in the game because they basically didn't have a roster. But now I'm down even worse, because now I believe the Colts stand at 17 players in the COVID list. And uh, that includes like basically the entire offensive line, uh, a running back, which that means it entered the running back room, and that's where the golden prize Jonathan Taylor is. Uh, and we've got now Darius is still on the list, Big Q, a lot of the star players in the Colts. So I'm pretty down bad that... Uh, this this week we play the Raiders and a win clinches a playoff berth and keeps us alive for the AFC South and the two seed. Um, so I'm pretty down bad that the Colts have so many players in the COVID list because pretty soon it might spread to everyone and uh, they still need to get one more win to clinch that playoff berth. Yeah, I mean, I would uh, I'd hate to be cheering for a team that is like on the borderline of getting into the playoffs and have that happen to them. Yeah, uh, lose two games because you just don't have your roster. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, thankfully, I cheer for a team that like is not <laughs> anywhere near sniffing the playoffs. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pivot in my down badness from football, and um, you know, because I I think the Lions are a lost cause this year. Um, oh, I got one for the Lions after you're I'm, done. I'm tired of being sad about them or about like caring about them, uh, for this year at least. Um, so stick around. Um, <laughs> but this, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm very down bad or, you know, I'm not like super ultra passionately down bad. Um, but I, my Detroit Pistons, um, <laughs> I just want to see them, you know, play competitively or like do something. I know that, you know, they're still in this rebuilding process. They got the number one draft pick, Cade Cunningham. He's kind of like hot and he's Mr. Hot and Cold. Like yeah. he'll have he'll have a he'll have like a really good game and then he'll like be thrown up bricks the next game. <laughs> um 
and I don't think that's any that's not his fault. He was like he's been battling some injuries. I hope that he's not a naturally injury prone player because that like we all know how those players pan out in the NBA. Yeah. And in pro sports in general. Um but I'd be really sad if that's the case. Um because the Pistons will never get a number one draft pick again for as long as I'm alive. I'm just mm-hmm. can, I'm just so sure that it's rigged for the teams that are like you know big markets. Um, yeah, and um, but yeah, I just like to see the Pistons like currently as I'm looking at the standings, they're five and twenty seven. They're sixteen <laughs> and a half games back in the Central. Um, it's just like you can't even like look at them and be like, oh man, like this team, like, oh, the Pistons, like the Pistons are playing our team. So we got to like, you know, really gear up for this one. Like, um, and I've just seen how all, like I, how all of my friends who I went to school with, like, you know, they're like you, they're big, uh, Milwaukee Bucks fans and, Mm -hmm. um, seeing them celebrate last year, uh, winning the championship. And that brought me back to Oh four when I was in elementary school, (laughs) um, you know, my, my, uh, my Ben Wallace, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Phillips, Tayshawn Prince, Rasheed Wallace, that team, uh, you know, brought me back to them winning the NBA championship. I'm like, man, I really, that'd be so exciting to have that happen again, or to like, you know, have any of my sports teams, uh, be competing for a championship. But like, I guess it kind of speaks to like the, the meta, um, analysis of where Detroit sports are right now. Um, just in a really, really d- dark place right now um <laughs> uh i have it on good authority that the red wings might be back soon um and i couldn't tell you on that one it, yeah i i couldn't tell you either i'm not a big hockey <laughs> person but i have it on authority that they might be back soon um but yeah we also on i guess on a slightly brighter note we have uh in just a few days time we have michigan playing in the college football oh. semifinal against georgia so that's at least something to be excited about but uh yeah, just generally down bad about my entire the entire state of Detroit sports, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna name the Pistons today as being like the the one of the main causes of factors on that. I I actually came in with a Lions moment for you too, in case you didn't say it. I mean, this might just be like opening wounds for Detroit fans, but I was talking to my sister about it, who's a Lions fan, and I just thought it was so funny. I mean, you know, they 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 did a typical Lions; they were good enough to screw up them not having the number one pick, but then this week. The Jags were playing the Jets. There was hope the Jags might beat the Jets. If they win, the Lions would go back into the one seed. Or not the one seed, the one pick. And then the Jags had one of the worst game-winning drive attempts I've ever seen. They, for some reason, usually like when you're on a game-winning drive with a little time, you have like a scripted play to go after. You potentially hit on your shot play. And they got their play down to the goal line. And uh, then, for some reason, when they had the ball, like third and goal, uh, instead of like, snapping a quick play and trying to take one shot at the end zone. They were on like the two yard line or they were, it was a goal to go situation. It was third and goal. And instead of like just taking their shot at the end zone, they just spiked the ball, wasted it down on the goal line. And then on fourth and goal didn't convert. So the, uh, the jets were able to just like QB sneak it out and, uh, win the game. Uh, the Jakes had such an easy opportunity to win that game and they basically threw it away. And I just thought that was just like classic for Detroit. They just needed one team to win a game and they'd control the one pick again and the team just royally screwed it up like only Alliance team almost could. So I just thought it was it was <laughs> funny that the Jags almost looked like the Lions and screwing up a game that they should have won and still allowing themselves to have the number one pick and making Detroit uh, still sit in the number two spot. I thought you were maybe going to talk about that, but I just thought that was funny watching. I was like, there's just no way a team can screw this up this bad. And of course, them screwing it up screws over the Lions. I just I thought it was funny. Because the Lions seem to be on just like the bad receiving end of any kind of luck. The Lions seem to be on the bad end of it. Yeah, the Lions just like... Nothing will ever go right. Um, I'm convinced that they'll never win. um, (laughs) For as long as I'm alive. So that just like lessens the pain. Yeah, Uh, you're just numb to it at some point. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I mean, if I'm, I'm afraid of what will happen if they ever do. Because then I'll... I'll get like sucked in, like you know, like just when just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Yeah, then you uh, get hope, and then they'll break your heart in the playoffs instead. Exactly. Yeah. Like like the closer they get to any kind of success, the more heartbroken I'll be. <laughs> but if they ever hit that success, it'll be that much sweeter. Yeah, that's a, I'm I'm a, I'm afraid of that. 
All right. I'm ready to wrap up if you are, though. I am. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is probably the episode that we did the the least with news. There just wasn't much out there, but I think it ended up being a pretty good episode with the whole segment of New Year's resolutions. I think it was something fun. I honestly think it's one of the better one of the better episodes we've done since Kyle and I have done them together. It was a pretty entertaining conversation. If you guys have any New Year's resolutions for some teams for your favorite team, drop it down below. I'd like to read them, maybe offer some input. Uh, maybe you're going to come up with a lot better one than we did for the teams, but it's a pretty fun episode overall. Obviously, if you guys are watching on YouTube, listening on YouTube, we'd appreciate if you dropped a like, comment, and subscribed. Honestly, mainly the comment. We just want to hear from you guys and grow the community even more and just hear what you guys think about the resolutions if you have any to offer us. Uh, if you're listening on the audio platforms, drop a follow on there. If you want to listen on the audio platforms, the link will be in the description. Otherwise, it'll probably be posted on Twitter somewhere so you can go check it out from there. But that's going to do it for this one. We really appreciate you guys watching and checking us out. We're getting close to the Call of Duty season. We're almost here. We almost have games to talk about. Probably about a month left uh, of podcasts until we're fully talking about games and talking about the storylines for the year. We can't wait for that. We know you guys can't wait for that either. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everyone.